Ever since its launch, the Grand i10 has been the segment benchmark. But the car is getting old now and there is a lot of competition which meant that Hyundai had to give it a midlife makeover. Which is what it has done. So let's take a look at what the changes are. There are a few nips and tucks to the face and yes, they are quite hard to notice. Look closely though and you may realize that Hyundai's trademark hexagonal grille has been made sleeker and comes with a chunkier mesh that creates a cascading effect. This design theme for the grille debuts on the Grand i10 and will be improvised further on future Hyundai cars. You also get LED daytime running lamps now which are placed alongside the fog lamps within a redesigned housing. To me, they sit far too low. The Eurospec i10 does a better job by integrating running lamps in the grille. Had they gone with this European design, the revisions at the back would have looked uniform too, matching the two round reflectors that flank the chunky black applique on the bumper. Changes to the cabin are quite subtle too. The sporty red or blue interiors that are seen on the Eurospec i10 could have truly given the Grand i cabin a facelift. Instead, it continues to use the same beige and black interior as the outgoing car. New equipment, however, includes automatic temperature control for the air conditioning and a new touchscreen infotainment system that gets satellite navigation and is also compatible with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. This update is more than just cosmetic though. There's also a new drivetrain on offer. The Grand i10, even in its upgraded Aftar, continues to come in two engine options. You have the familiar 1.2-litre petrol and a new 1.2-litre diesel motor. It replaces the 1.1-litre that we had with the earlier Grand i10 and puts out a little more power, now 75 PS instead of the outgoing unit's 71 PS. The torque has gone up as well, from 160 Newton meters to 190 Newton meters. Though available in a narrower rev band between 1750 to 2250 RPM, it makes for a very meaty mid-range. What that translates into is better drivability overall. Now, the earlier 1.1-litre motor was a revolution in itself. Never really felt out of breath whether you're driving in the city or out on the highway. The 1.2 takes it a notch higher. It doesn't feel the need to have many gear shifts when you're driving around in the city traffic. And even out on the highway, the engine feels more relaxed. It will do triple-digit speeds at lower engine RPM as compared to the 1.1. The engine comes with a 5-speed manual transmission and can happily cruise at 40 km an hour even in 4th gear. During our tests, it was quite impressive in the way it gathered pace in 3rd and 4th gears. Unsurprisingly then, it managed to return 15.58 km to a litre in the city and an impressive 26.6 km to a litre on the highway. Like the 1.1 that it replaces, this engine too belongs to the U2 family of motors from Hyundai and we have come to like them for their refinement. This one settles into an idling speed of around 800 rpm and emits a subtle thrum inherent to its three-cylinder configuration. It sounds quite muted as the torque builds up and it's only past the 3500 rpm mark that its gravelly note becomes evident. But for city speeds or highway cruising, it remains quite silent for a diesel. While the engine is quite silent for a diesel motor, you have a lot of road noise that creeps into the cabin even at city speeds. And that is sort of a downer because Hyundai's are known to have cabins that are pleasant and silent. The Grand engine, unfortunately, is not in that safe league. Hyundai claims to have made some changes to the suspension components of the Grand i10 to improve ride quality and also in turn reduce the suspension noise. Now quite frankly, the change isn't really noticeable. But then again, we never really had many complaints with the ride quality of the Grand i10. The steering geometry has been redone as well, but this too isn't very noticeable. It still has a vague at center feel which robs some of the driving fun from an otherwise peppy car. It is quite convenient for city use though. Complementing the latter is a slick shifting gear stick and the clutch. Thankfully now, the clutch pedal on the Grand i10 has lost some of that springy feel that you had with the earlier one. It just makes it a little more convenient when it comes to driving in the city. What's also improved is the braking feel. 
Now compared to some of the higher spec Hyundai's like the Elantra or the Tucson that we have reviewed recently, this one thankfully doesn't have a spongy feel. The bite is much more predictable and that's a good feeling to have. On the safety front, the Grand Aten loses big points in my book. While the driver airbag is standard across the range, the passenger airbag is present only in the range topping trims. What's even worse is that anti-lock brakes only come on the top spec Asta trim. It seems like it's a step back when the rest of the competition is moving ahead in this department. As I said earlier, the Grand i10 has been one of the best sellers in its segment. However, this segment now sees a lot of new entrants and the competition has just gotten tougher. Thankfully though, the Grand i10, its midlife makeover comes just in time to help it put up a strong fight.